Welcome, everybody. I'm sure we'll have a few people starting to jump on here as we keep going. Um, but welcome to Price It Right, or what is what is the actual title on this? Uh, how to price your home. Yeah, something Pinpoint like your price. Pinpoint your price. Pinpoint That's your price. There it is. Um, all right, welcome everybody. Um, so today is all about pricing it right. So whether it's um, giving your buyer accurate information on what you think the price of a home should be, if there's a house that's maybe overpriced or you know confirming that it's accurately priced at the moment. Uh, and then more importantly, I think is when you're listing houses, figuring out you know how to accurately price the house and what tools we have available uh, to help you get there. So, if you guys have any questions throughout the time, please feel free to jump in, interrupt me, um, but I'll give a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Will Stale. I'm trying to see on here how many people I've met. Unfortunately, this past year, it's been a little bit difficult uh, to meet everybody, uh, but I work on the Stale Realty Group. I've been selling for about six years now. Uh, before then, I was, well, I've been with KW since basically the beginning of our office, so I've kind of had many different hats, uh, played many different roles, uh, but most recently I've uh, been selling. Uh, and these past three years, I've been pretty consistent about the same business. I sell about 25 to 30 homes a year uh, and roughly eight to 10 million in volume each year. Um, so, and then I, obviously I mentioned I work on a team. So I have an amazing team behind us that, that help with a lot of the back end stuff. Um, but as far as pricing goes, uh let's dive right in what i'll do today that i think is helpful is i'll eventually share my screen and kind of run through two different scenarios with different houses i've pulled from areas uh different price points just trying to show you guys like my strategy uh, one thing i'll say at the beginning is everyone does it a little bit differently you know you can get to the same result in different ways i know that you know using mls and using the systems there's different ways to pull cmas so, you know, this is not the steadfast only way to do it. This is just the way that I do it. Uh, and I'm sure there's different ways to skin the cat. So keep that in mind as you've gone through. And I always encourage people to uh, link up with an experienced agent if you're inexperienced and, you know, haven't seen a ton of homes or, uh, you know, you're new to, new to the game. Link up with someone. If you get your first listing appointment, there are so many agents in our office that would be willing to help out. Um, and even if they don't go on the appointment with you, you know, they can at least sit down with you and kind of run through a CMA and run through scenarios and help you price something accurately. Um, especially now, I think it's, it's easier and also harder at the same time because inventory levels are so low. When we look at the past six months, you know, we don't have a plethora of homes that have sold, right? And when an appraiser's looking at to, to the values of the houses, they're really looking within that six month period. Uh, and I'll talk about that as well. Sometimes I go a little bit beyond that. So you really have to be kind of um, accurate. And I always say start broad and then kind of bring it in uh, smaller and smaller. So I'll kind of run through, you know, what I do. Um, but let's first talk about, you know, a listing appointment. So let's say you get a phone call and someone wants to list their house. First thing I'm going to do is obviously look up the house, see if there's any past sales history. So let me uh, just kind of run through like my first few steps and how I navigate that and find out what people are doing. I don't know the level of everyone on this call, but I think it'd be helpful just to kind of like walk you through my steps as I get that first phone call. I've got the address. My first move is let's do some research and, and figure out exactly what's going on with this house. And hopefully there's some prior sales history there. So just one second. Let's go to the Google Chrome. And if anything is glitchy or anything, please speak up if you can't see uh, what I've got going on, on my screen. If anyone could get it, we have a thumbs up. Am I looking good on the screen? Screen sharing? All right, cool. Um, grab an MLS here. So first thing for me, um, when I've got an address or a potential listing appointment, I usually just go to like the multiple address field or search function and type in the address, see if there's any, any sales recently. That'll give me kind of a good indication of, of what's going on with this house. Um, I'm just gonna use an example from Fox Point to start, uh, which is a house that I've sold recently um, in the past few years. So 502 Calumet. Sometimes I'll throw in, like I noticed this this morning when I was doing the, the prep for this, 
Sometimes I'll throw in this street direction and hit all when I, when I search for it, sometimes nothing will pop up. Okay. It actually worked this time, but I put, I put a lowercase E this morning and nothing popped up. So sometimes I'll, I'll eliminate that street direction just to give me an idea. All right. You know, maybe it'll pop up. Sometimes the addresses are inputted differently. So you always got to do that. Typically, you know, most of the time you're going to find the most recent sale by what the highest, highest price is. So I usually will sort by price just to figure, find that quickly. Um, let me move this over here. Hold on. Oh, thanks. Um, but beyond that, I'll go into the details on any of them and just click history. And the history is going to tell you, you know, if they've had recent sales and what the sales are. So that's my first move is, all right, what's the house? When is it recently sold? This one luckily has sold pretty recently. So it's a pretty good indication of a starting price point for this house. Um, so I'll click into that. The next thing I'll do is if I can't find an address um, or if I can't find a recent sale, there's no log sales in MLS, I'll go to tax information. So tax information is gonna be kind of your nuts and bolts. All right, when was this property last transacted and, and changed hands? Sometimes it's not always inputted into MLS. If it's an off market sale or if it's a bank sale or, or something like that, they're not always records in MLS. Um, are you still able to admit people to the room or do I need to do that? You are? Okay, cool. I am, yeah, you're all good. I keep getting these pop-ups. Um, so if you can't find a house, the next move is just gonna be click on the tax information uh, and you can find it uh, various different ways, but typically you're gonna look at address. Uh, at the top, you're gonna drop down, figure out the municipality of the house. So this one's in Fox Point. And then down below, you just type in 502 Calumet and click search. And you can find the tax history. Down at the bottom on the tax history, it's gonna, it's gonna show you when uh, the most recent sales have happened. So, you know, oftentimes you'll run into a house that you don't find in MLS. This is where you're gonna find when the sale happened, 2019. And then on the right side, what the value in the sale price is, right? You can see grantor, grantee. If you have, let's say you have a listing lead and you don't know their address, you can do the same thing by just looking up the owner's name. You have to know the, the municipality that they live in. Um, so you just drop it down, find the municipality, type in their last name, and you can search for their house that way and kind of do some reverse lookups uh, to figure out what the house is. So I know for a lot of people, this is probably basic stuff that you already know how to do, but I just wanted to make sure that you know, for some of the newer people that might not know this, uh, tax information in MLS is going to be your big friend. If you can't find it on the top tabs here, you know, I've got my, my quick links. You just go into the menu and you can find everything here. Um, taxes, tax information. So first things first is look up the house. Um, next thing, before I kind of move forward into actually running a CMA, um, let me just stop sharing my screen real quick. My first thing after that, though, is to schedule a, a pre-listing phone call. Um, you know, oftentimes we're going into listing appointments. You've probably never seen the house. Uh, you don't know exactly what the updates are and what the updates are, are probably some of the most important key factors into pricing the house. And that's where your expertise is going to come into play. You know, when you're looking at a CMA, CMAs are statistical, you know, so they're comparing per, they're uh, comparing square footage bed, bath counts, you know, things that are specifically tied to statistics and numbers. Uh, what they can't do is factor in location uh, and factor in level of finish, right? And, you know, size of yard, different amenities, different things that it's close to, things that your expertise is really going to come into play when you're pricing a house. Uh, and that's why it's so important to, in the beginning, to link up with someone who has experience seeing houses. Uh, we used to have the opportunity to go on broker tour, which has kind of fizzled out um, in the recent year, just due to the pandemic. Uh, but that was an awesome opportunity to be able to see houses consistently. Not all areas did that. Um, but if you can tour and, and see houses or tag along with someone that's showing houses, that's going to be your best, you know, starting point for just building up your base of knowledge so that you know things and have things to compare to. Um, but my first step, so I've got the address, I've looked up the house I've checked the vitals. I figure out, you know, what is it recently sold at? Uh, my next move is to schedule a pre-listing consultation. Now, I tell my sellers that this is no more than a five to 10 minute conversation. I just want to get the vitals from you. The majority of our time uh, discussing things will be at the listing appointment in person. 
Um, but the reason I do this is to ask important questions about what updates they've done to the house or any changes that they've made to the house. Because I really like to go into a listing appointment with the CMA in hand. Uh, that's not necessarily going to be the actual price, you know, that we lock into. Oftentimes I'll go into it and there will be some changes that I need to make or, you know, things that I discovered during the listing appointment that's going to change how I've priced the house. But I like to go in at least having a rough idea. And with a pre-listing appointment or a five minute phone call, you can ask them simple questions. Just, can you tell me a little bit about your house? You know, get, get it from their point of view. How long, how long have you owned it? What kind of updates have you done to it? Have you changed the square footage of the house? That's a big one. If someone's made an addition, you need to factor that in, you know, because a lot of the CMA is going to be going off of the size of the house and tax records don't always indicate, you know, an updated addition that's been done in the past you know, one or two years, sometimes even three years. It's not always updated in the tax records. Um, so you could be going into a house that's 2,000 square feet on paper, but they had a six or 700 square foot addition. Uh, you know, that's gonna be an important detail that you wanna know. So I always ask, have you made any changes to the square footage additions? What kind of updates have you done since you've owned it? Um, and then from there, I'll, it'll give me kind of a basis point as I'm going through the CMA to figure out what houses I'm comparing to as I'm, pulling in my comparables. Um, so that's a big key first step is, is having that pre-listing appointment so that you're not going in blind. Um, sometimes you don't get that opportunity. You're going to go in blind. You're just going to have to do your best with your CMA. And if you get to the table and say, hey, I didn't realize you've had so much updating on your house, I'm going to need to rerun a CMA um, because what I have here is just not sufficient. I will, sometimes I won't even pull the CMA out that I've done because it's so inaccurate. So don't be afraid of that. You're not always going to go in with like the most accurate depiction of the house. Um, so any questions so far as like, far as like my lead up or kind of preparation before I get into working a CMA for you guys? I don't see any unmutes. All right, cool. I'll keep rocking here then. Um, so cool. Great so far. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate the feedback. These Zoom calls are always weird because it's like you're, I feel like I'm talking to myself half the time. Um, okay, so let's share my screen again and I'll run a CMA on the property that I just pulled. So like I said, there's many different ways to, to run a CMA and I'm gonna show you my way. I'm sure there's different ways to do it and I've seen people do it differently, um, but I'll just run through kind of how I do it. First things first for me, is I'm gonna pull the municipality. I like to start broad, kind of start like high level and then break it down even further just so that I have enough information. So my first thing is I'm gonna pull six month sales for the specific municipality. So for this one, it's gonna be Fox Point as my, my reference point. And I'm gonna pull active and then I'm gonna highlight everything down to sold. You'll notice on the left side, um, when they, I. By the way, I do not like the quick search. I like the old school one, um, but this is a new one. There is a way where you can have these fields automatically open. I know some people you might not, it might not look the same. I have in my settings, I forgot how to do it, but you, there's a way to go into your settings and have the fields open so that you don't have to drop them down uh, on this left side as you're going through. So one thing to keep in mind, nice little easy trick to make things quicker for you. So I'll, I'll, I'll pull active, delayed, pending, sold. Um, I won't pull expired. I, I don't don't use expireds in, in comparing things. Um, and then I'll go down to municipality, Milwaukee, and Fox Point, or sorry, that was county. Fox Point, and then in sales, I'm gonna drop down below and I'm gonna click sold date. I wanna pull the last six months sales history. So for this, we're gonna go back to 2020. So let's say October 1st, I don't I mean, roughly six months and like i said like when you get more specific if you're trying to nail things down and there aren't enough houses i'll go outside of six months just so i can see you know in the past year or 2020 you know to get, give me a broader reference point um what i'll do then is i've got 76 sales i always like to start with um doing a statistical cma with all the sales in the municipality so what I'll do there is I've got these 76 sales. I'm gonna hit view results, run through them. And I'm gonna hit CMA and I'm gonna use all results. 
and I'm going to hit a statistical CMA. If you do a full CMA with 76 homes, good luck. It probably won't even work. It's way too much information. Um, statistical CMA is a good first step. So just to back up, I've selected all the homes. You don't have to select the homes. You can just hit CMA at the top right here. If you guys are following, sorry if I'm going quickly. Um, and then I'll hit use all results. When we get further down the road and I actually select specific houses, that's when you'll select use the selected. Uh, and then the right hand side, I'll hit statistical CMA. And the reason I start with this is to have on hand, you know, what's the price per square foot, basically the vitals of what range are we selling in? Uh, obviously, Fox Point's going to have a very large range, right? So it's going to pull active pending, sold, delayed, and then overall totals. So most of the time, I'm focusing on this sold section. So an average sale price of 509,850. Um, sale to list price ratio or list to sale price ratio. We're looking at almost one on the high end, obviously above. That number is going to keep ticking up as homes are selling over list and we continue to see sales pop into the system. Um, the average list per, price per square foot, this is where it gets interesting. And this is where we're really going to have to dial in because you know you've got homes in here that are on the lake that are gonna have a much larger price per square foot, you know, million dollar plus, million to $3 million homes. Uh, and then you're gonna have things, you know, down in towards like 200, 250,000. So huge range. Um, what I'll do from there is I'll get much more specific, but I like to pull this be just to see like, what are the vitals? Obviously how many homes have sold in the area. And uh, so in the past six months, 58 homes have sold. These are just great statistics for you to bring to the table when you talk to the sellers. Uh, what's the average days on market? You know, 37, cumulative days, 57. And then really I'm looking at sold price per square foot. And when you look at sold price per square foot, the majority of the time we're looking at above grade. So keep that in mind. We, you know, you don't always have the luxury of seeing the above grade depending on how the listings put into the system. Um, but when we're comparing the majority of the time, we exclude the basement. I know as you go west into Lake Country or different areas that have a lot more walkout basements that are you know, more finished and part of the house, they'll include below grade. Um, on the east side, you know, Fox Point, we don't have as much as that. Uh, we're typically looking at above grade. Um, so that's what I like to pull that. I like to have that on hand. We'll kind of dive a little bit deeper and get more specific. Are you guys able to see? I'm just realizing. Frozen for some reason. Huh. Sorry about that. I think I know what just happened. Um, it was just sharing my. There we go. All right. Now, can you see the CMA? Yep. All right. Cool. Sorry about that. It was just on my uh, browser. So, this is what I was looking at and talking about for the past three, five minutes. Uh, the statistical CMA, I'll quickly run back through it. The sold, 58 solds, just gives you the vitals as I talked about, list of sale price ratio, estimated total square footage. And then I'm really looking at price per square foot that's gonna be super helpful down the road as you're pricing a house. Um, so have that, reference it. I always pull these as we get further down the road too, when you kind of get more specific in the listings that you're comparing. Um, but a great resource to start with if you're kind of just trying to get the vitals for an area. A specific area so at this stage you didn't put in the price at all or a range no i did not put a price or a range i, I just wanted yeah not, not a range now for when i get more specific into the house i'll do it again and i'll pull the range of the houses that i'm looking at and, and pull a more specific statistical cma but that's just like my vitals what's the area selling for what's it on average um when i'm going go back a little bit here and go back to a quick search. So using this home that I'm kind of referencing, 502 East Calumet, I'm just gonna pull it up. What I'll do is I'll typically have it up on another screen as I'm kind of running through things just to have a reference point. So obviously this one sold recently, so it makes it a little bit easier to know like roughly what the range is. Uh, let's say I've had my pre-listing call and they haven't changed anything. So I'll go through the photos and assuming that I haven't seen the house, I've been in this house previously, obviously I sold it. 
Um, but I'll run through the photos just to get a good idea, you know, what kind of finishes they are, what kind of level. This one's a nicely done home, granite countertops. You now I'll be looking at the photos, especially if I haven't been in the house, just that when I run through my CMA and start to pull specific homes that are compared to it, I know kind of what I'm working with. Um, so run through the house quickly, kind of get a quick vital, quick, quick synopsis of what it looks like. Then when I'm actually pulling my CMA, what I'll do and and knowing this where this sold in 2019, 364, I'm going to narrow my range probably from 350 to 450. Assuming that appreciation in this area is you know eight to ten percent a year in the past two years, you know I think we're going to probably be right in that 400 to 425 mark. Um, but you know things have been selling for like crazy right now, so we're starting to see huge appreciations. So you should see some uptick, especially if a home's only sold in the last two years, I mean, it's still gonna be a drastic change in price uh, compared to what it was previously. So when I'm going through my quick search, I'll pull single family, active delayed pending sold. You're really only comparing your actives and your solds. Uh, well, and your pendings, obviously. Delays aren't gonna even pull into the search, but just for ease, I click right through it. Milwaukee um, County. point now some people will get specific and say all right what's the bed and bath count i don't start with that because i think sometimes you know you i don't necessarily only go three bedroom to three bedroom sometimes there's a three to four bedroom that has similar square footage similar uh finishes that can be comparable so it's not always an apples to apples comparison um and this one has two full bathrooms so that's another thing that, you know, I'll typically just kind of start broad, but I'll go down to uh, the sold price range. And I'll put 350 to 450. Just to narrow down there. Um, oops, got to do the sold dates. If you see hundreds of homes, you've obviously not selected down a sold date. So let's go past six months. Now, if I pull past six months and I only see October. So past six months, we're gonna narrow down to 34. So that's a fair amount of homes. Now, specifically looking at where the home is located also is gonna be very important. So I'll go to the map and I'll understand, all right, what kind of quadrant am I, look, am I looking in? Especially as, when you're on the east side you're going to want to eliminate some of the neighborhoods that are close to the lake because they're, they're going to be much different price points, especially east of Lake Drive. When you're looking in Fox Point, if I've got a home west of Lake Drive and Fox Point, I'm eliminating pretty much everything along this section because you could have a three bedroom house that sells for five, six, seven hundred thousand uh, dollars because of the proximity and the location. And that's where having an experienced agent who knows specific municipalities is going to be very helpful. So for this one, I'm going to go back to my search here and I'm going to first narrow down my map, right? I'm going to eliminate a few of these homes that I know are down along Beach Drive or, or close to the lake that are really going to skew the results here. Um, and, ooh, hold on. I got to go back to edit search. I've got sold price, but I also want, also want to narrow down my list price here. So 16 homes, looking at the map. So that already eliminated a lot of those. Um, so I'm specifically gonna look down and kind of start pulling through photos, right? That's the first thing that I'll do is just to see like, all right, how are we comparing from a, a photo standpoint? What are the levels of finishes? So I'll start to select through knowing that they were at 365 and also knowing their square footage, right? I'll start to look at photos and then I'll also drop down estimated total square footage just so I'm looking top down from the largest homes to the smallest. All right. So looking at this uh, Mohawk house, it's a five bedroom, four and a bath, four and a half bathroom house. I'm not even going to compare that. Look at these square footages. The house that we're looking at right now is a total of 2,100 square feet, but above grade 1,600. So I'm going to eliminate all those ones that are above that mark that are gonna skew our results, right? So looking at the numbers here, and I'll pull some of these that are above, um, but as we go down, like this one's 
similar, but it's a four, two. We're on a three, two here um, and start to look at photos and kind of run through, you know, different style house, but updated. So the first thing I'm looking at is really kitchens and bathrooms. Are the kitchens and bathrooms updated? Uh, this is a great comp actually for the price, a unique house, but also nice. So I'll start selecting houses that I think start to look comparable. Another one here, similar, uh, nice open concept, nicely updated kitchen. I'll start to pull these comps in. Crossway, I know this specific house um, and looking at the details of it, if you look at square footage, 1900 square feet, four bedroom, two bath, this is gonna be a good comp as well. Um, and then you're gonna kind of keep going down. This house I've been in as well, a very odd house. Um, in my opinion, I think this house is a pool. Oh no, different house. Um, it's similar, it's on Lake Drive. That's another thing that you'll have to kind of factor in. But as I'm going down and looking at the list, I'll kind of run back to list price. I'm just making sure that I'm staying roughly within that 1500 to 2200 square foot range, looking at total square footage and also checking the above grade square footage. You'll see it can be drastic. Like some of these houses, especially in Fox Point, you're gonna have houses that have an extra square, a uh, thousand square feet in the basement because they're ranches and they have huge basements. So you have to kind of consider that as well when you're looking through the houses um, and understanding things that you've been in previously. Another great house, three bedroom, two and a half bathroom here. Uh, I know this house specifically, looking at the photos. This is a great comp, nice open concept. I think this was uh, a KW listing, obviously an investment property that with, had a lot of work done to it. Um, but from a comp standpoint, as far as the size and the, the level of finish, it might be a little bit nicer, but it's certainly gonna help the price of the house. Um, so as I'm kind of going down, I'm just looking through the houses and kind of referencing things that maybe I've been in previously. Uh, and that's why when I say going through a CMA with someone who has experience, if you haven't been in a lot of these houses, talk to someone that does a lot of work in that area that they can give you specific reference points as they're kind of looking through these houses. So I've gone down, I've selected five. When I'm going through a CMA, I like to get specific. I'm typically looking for, let's say five to seven houses specifically to compare the CMA with. Um, so we're getting close to that point, but I'll keep running through, just looking for houses. I mean, all these houses are actually great comps, uh, looking at the sizes and the finishes. So when you're going through, I've pulled these houses, you know, it's, I'm thinking we're going to get right in that range of 400 to 425. Um, and, you know, we've got a 375 in here, but it was updated and similar size square footage. So what I'll do here then to compare is I'll always go back and just grab the MLS number um, from the listing that I'm looking to compare it to. So I'll copy that number. I'm going to run over here and I'm going to hit CMA. And I'm going to use selected. And I always go with the full CMA that will pull kind of everything specifically down to each data sheet and hit next step. Next thing, you don't, you don't always have to label this. You know, the first page on the CMA is like a cover page, you know, use box point or whatever. I typically just leave it blank, to be honest. Um, go over to the next step. So if you have a prior listing, that's where this is super helpful because you can auto populate all these fields. If you don't have a prior listing, it takes a little bit more time. Um, and you're going to have to update specifically, you know, all these statistics in here, but the majority of the time, you know, you're having a prior listing that you're comparing it to, you're going to hit auto populate fields from an existing listing. Click here. Uh, sometimes the MLS numbers from Wirex, which is outside of our Metro MLS will pull different houses. So just be mindful of that is when you're actually specifically putting in your MLS number from the prior listing. I'll pull just Metro MLS, so I'm not looking into the other MLS uh, systems in Wirex because it can, it can pull a different house and it actually happens quite frequently. Uh, so make sure that you're looking at that, looking at the picture that pops up here. Hit submit, it's gonna auto populate all the statistics, all the facts about this house uh, down into the subject property field. And then you're gonna go down and hit next step here. So I've got my six houses that I'm comparing to. Uh, all in Fox Point, all within the similar, um, as far as location goes, and as well as size, uh, which is huge. And then also looking at finishes, which 
looking at location and finishes, like I said, is really where your expertise is going to come into play um, because you kind of have to, you know, use your judgment uh, to do the best in comparing that property. And hopefully you've had the, the prep work on the front end to know exactly what they've done to the house. And if you don't, you're going to have to run back and, and do a new CMA after you've actually seen the house, which is, you know, a common thing. You know, sometimes we'll leave a listing appointment and, and nail down the price, you know, later that day as we've kind of done some more research. So you're not always nailing down the price right away. Obviously, you'd like to get the listing appointment signed on, on site, but there's a few cases where we've gone through it and had to rerun the numbers. So you've got your subject properties in here. Going to hit next for the comps. Um, these next couple pages, you're just kind of flying through, just making sure that everything um, looks good you can make some adjustments right so if you want to adjust up or down you know typically in this price range i i don't do that but when you get into luxury price points uh we will make adjustments because there's certain things that just uh you know some houses need adjustments in order to compare more accurately based on the finishes based on locations uh so you can make adjustments on this page up or down from the actual price that it's at Gonna hit next step. It's gonna give you a summary. This is gonna give you kind of your overall vitals. What's the average list to sale price? What's the average total square footage? Right around 2000, very similar. What's the average price per square foot? Right around 219. Um, and what's the average days on market? Obviously starting to get lower. Gonna hit next steps. This is where it's gonna give you your, your high, low, and your recommended. So kind of what I anticipated here, right in that 415 range. Um, you keep in mind, this is specifically pulling just these properties. So it's doing an average. I mean, it's you're, this is where you're going to have to kind of work with the range here um, to understand. Obviously, you can see that you can edit this. So if you need to make some adjustments and you don't want to or you want to pull out some outliers, you can. Um, I'll typically leave it, but I'm not always just relying on like, hey, this is what the CMA spit out. This is what we should price your property at. So we're done with that. I'm going to hit download and just kind of run through what the CMA looks like um, and where we reference it. But, you know, sometimes you're going to get sellers excited and they say, oh, we want to go on the high end of the range. Well, you know, that's not always a good idea. There's certain things that, you know, houses that we're comparing to that you don't have. So you have to get specific uh, and referencing these specific listings when you're walking through it. Um, so for this house, just running through a CMA quickly. Uh, and what it looks like. I'll print this off, bring it to the listing appointment. Um, sometimes I'll send it to them ahead of time just to say, hey, here's a, a CMA I ran on it. Second page is going to give you, you know, location. Obviously, we're pulling all houses relatively within the vicinity. The house that you're comparing to is in the pinpoint in the middle there. Going down to, you know, this is all the information about the house, specifically the subject property. Then you get to the comparable properties. So when you're walking a seller through this, uh, this is great because it kind of gives you a side-by-side -side comparison specifically uh, for the house, looking at estimated total square footage. We're, look, we're all looking at roughly the same. Um, looking at all the vitals, all the specifics, and, you know, for them, obviously the price that, that the home sold at. So for them, each page is going to have the subject property as the first property on the left side, comparing over here. So you won't see any list price, sold price or anything for this house because it's just pulling its, uh, the specific details of the listing down here below. Um, so looking through each house and then it'll give you kind of a recap of what the recommended high, median and low are. Same thing repeated here, uh, giving you more of your statistical analysis, statistical CMA on this property. Um, and then again, it's gonna give you your high, low and recommended. So. You know, I, I typically say, all right, here's the, the rough range of the property, but we've got to pull out based on what we're looking at as far as what your level of updates are and looking specifically at different properties, what you have versus what they have in comparison. For this house, I know that there was an outlier at 440. I don't think it's a 440 house. I'd probably realistically price it uh, around 420, um, maybe 415, 420. The strategy that we often have now, and you'll see, I know people get upset about this in Wauwatosa, people will drastically underprice it. I think that in my opinion, accurately pricing a house right now is gonna be beneficial to you regardless because you're gonna get interest. Overpricing can be a killer. Um, we've seen houses that are well overpriced 
and you end up getting less money in the long run because it builds up a stigma and days on market, especially right now, are not your friend. <laughs> if you're on the market for more than you know, three days, there's something wrong with your house. Uh, so you want to make sure you're accurately pricing as, as possible. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's just what we're working with right now. And then at the end of the, the CMA, it'll pull the specific data sheets for each house in comparison here. Um, and you can, sometimes I will uh, go through when I'm looking at these houses so that they can see them. If they haven't seen these houses in person, which a lot of people haven't, I'll go back to my search results and I'll just share the selected, uh, these selected properties via email and the interactive version so that they also have a link that they can click through and see the photos for themselves. Um, so that's another thing that's very helpful. You know, the CMA only tells you really statistics if they don't know the level of finishes or can't look through the houses. Um, that's another thing that I'll send uh, complimentary alongside that too, to help them see what we're seeing as far as finishes, layout. You know, some of them are very open concept, very updated. Um, so having that reference point is another thing that's going to be very helpful for you. Um, any questions on... I'm going to stop sharing my screen real quick. Any questions on that CMA and kind of how I ran through that so far? Sorry if I'm going super fast. I'm trying to make it as easy. I see a few chat things. Hold on. Oh, that was earlier. All right, cool. Um, now I'm going to run into a, a different area. Oh, here we go. What are the differences between CMAs, RPR, and MLS? MLS more accurate. Um, so RPR, another great resource. It's a uh, realtor property resource, I think is what it is. Um, MLS is specific data in our market, specific homes that have sold. So the difference in there is RPR does have all that data syndicated. It goes a little bit deeper into looking at school districts, um, it has just different reference points. I haven't used RPR a ton. I like to use mostly MLS, but I know a lot of agents do use RPR, uh, and you do have access to that, uh, via your, so via your MLS account, your MLS, uh, I want to say when you go to sign up, you'll use, is anyone here use RPR that can, that can speak to that? I do. I was my team started at shore west so we were trained on rpr and not mls okay um but you just log in with like your same login for mls oh okay good yeah I've i used to use rpr a, a bit i haven't recently um but i know a lot of people do and it's a great resource that has a lot more information about specific neighborhoods uh specific school districts you know just different stuff that mls doesn't specifically go into um I like to use MLS because that's the data that we're working off of. That's the, you know, that's the specific data that, that every day we're looking in. Um, but it does pull the same, I mean, it syndicates directly from MLS. So I'm sure RP, RPR has the same thing. Um, one other thing too, is like when you get specific into, let's just talk about like Whitefish Bay for an example. Whitefish Bay has many different like sub pockets. If I'm comparing a house, um, Let's say I have a house in the Clody Park neighborhood. I'll specifically just pull that Clody Park neighborhood because I know the values of those properties are going to be much different than pulling from the rest of Whitefish Bay. So when you get into nuances and, and different areas that have specific neighborhoods, um, I will draw a map. And I'll show you really quickly what that would look like. So let's just pull Whitefish Bay quickly or I'll just do uh, that neighborhood. Um, so just so you guys know, is this screen sharing right now? No. Let's stop. All right, we're good. Um, so like if I'm looking at just specifically a house in the Clody Park neighborhood, just so you guys have a quick example of how to do that. Um, I'll pull Whitefish Bay. Sold dates back to, let's just go all 2020. So when I'm looking at the three, 385 houses that have sold in Whitefish Bay in the last, what is it, 14 or 15 months that I've pulled. So Clody Park neighborhood is gonna be everything east of Lake Drive, 
basically within this quadrant. So if I'm specifically pulling homes to compare in that property, I'll draw my map tool right around that specific area. I'm not pulling the rest of Whitefish Bay, I'm pulling specific to this. And that's gonna give you the most accurate information because those homes are gonna sell on a much higher average price per square foot than the rest of Whitefish Bay. So nuances like that and knowing specific areas can be very helpful, especially if you're going down the road of um, you know, getting hyper local, I would call it, rather than just pulling like all of Whitefish Bay, uh, especially properties along the North Shore. You know, when you get closer to the lake, the value is going to be drastically different. So, um, and you'll also have, I mean, if you're pulling broadly, you know, you want to eliminate houses. If you're, you know, let's say, a little bit further inland, you, know, you don't want to have the, the, the houses on the lake skewing your results. Um, so you have to be specific to different areas and, and pull a little bit more hyper-focused on that. Um, let me see. So that is, you know, kind of how I run my CMAs. Like I said, you know, you can get into the statistical CMA, start broad, um, but it's super important in the beginning to have those questions with the sellers up front so that you understand what, what's the level of house that we're working with. If you can see the house and rerun your CMA and need to, oftentimes that's something that we do. Um, but typically you're going in with a range. And right now I'd say it's super important to price accurately. Homes are going crazy over asking and you have to also be mindful of the appraisal. You know, you don't wanna be selling something that's way over list and then have, you know, the appraisal comes back 25 or 30,000 below you know, what you guys agree to is an accepted offer price and you're having to have a difficult conversation with both your buyers and your sellers. We're starting to see that a lot more. Um, and that's why I really think accurately pricing is very important right now, uh, as far as making sure that you are giving your sellers what they need and accurately depicting what a property is worth. Um, and the whole underpricing strategy where you underprice super far below, I think is, it ends up making it a frenzy for people. And I think harder for the appraisers to actually understand what's going on. I'd say accurate, or maybe just slightly below, you'll draw people right now in this market. that are gonna drive the price way up and over list. Um, so that's kind of all I have for how I run a CMA. Any question? I was gonna run another example, but I feel like I'm going a little bit long in that um, the other house is, is a, kind of an anomaly. So thank you guys for joining. I appreciate it. Any questions that you guys have for me before we sign off here? I don't see anything in the chat. All right, cool. Yeah, if you ever want to run through anything or have a specific house, you know, reach out to myself or any other experienced agents to sit down and walk through it. Um, always available to help and, and kind of give a second opinion. For sure. All right. You guys have a great weekend. Have a great Friday. Thanks, Willie. Uh, yeah, have a good weekend. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon.